Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the watercolor brush that elevated my watercolor skills. Just this brush alone, it came into my life just a couple of months ago actually, because I had been looking for a really solid filbert brush to paint flowers with specifically and a few other things. And I just couldn't find the right size, the right snappiness, the hair type, all of that. And so I approached Princeton, who you guys know, I am obsessed with their brushes. I used them for years pretty much only use their size or their round Heritage 4050 brushes. But I was like, hey, you guys need more filbert brushes. I need a size 12 filbert brush, would you make it? So they just launched or are about to launch the Blooms brush. This is in their Velvet Touch series. So it's a long handle, really velvety smooth handle. It feels very nice to touch. Um, and it's a size 12. So it's literally the perfect size for the flowers that I paint, peonies, roses, doesn't matter what type of flower. I also love using it for stems and leaves. I also paint figures with this filbert brush. It is a beautiful brush. It's perfectly snappy and holds a lot of water and pigment, just like my favorite Heritage 4050 brushes do. So if you're a watercolor artist or gouache artist, and you've been wanting to find the perfect filbert brush, this is the gem. So I'm just gonna do a quick demo of how I would use this brush. I use it a lot for flowers, like I said, but I also do beyond that figure studies, landscapes, any sort of dappled round edge, but the shape of the brush, the natural shape of this brush is the perfect shape for flower petals, especially for peonies and roses. So before I get into the little demo, let's talk about how this brush has changed my life. Uh, a little bit dramatic, but for real, when using a round brush for florals, it just takes a couple extra steps to make the petals, to make the leaves. Leaves, for example, I would use a compound stroke where I'm going from pressure to release of pressure to get a fat and then a thin stroke at the tip of the leaf. And that's fine and easy and no, no complaints there. But with this brush, all I literally have to do is go plop. <laughs> so it's really just perfectly made for flowers. And then same thing for petals. If I wanna use a round brush to paint, like let's say a fluffy peony or a rose, um, using the side of the brush with the slanted hold, I can definitely make those teardrop shaped petals. But the shape of this filbert is literally shaped for a teardrop petal. So all I have to do is go plop. <laughs> on the paper and it makes the petal shape for me. So you can paint a lot quicker. It means that you're painting with wet and wet technique a lot quicker, more results with blooms and whatnot because you're not sitting there fussing with a round brush doing compound strokes and a combination of other different brush holds to get it done. So not only is it the perfect shape for petals um, and leaves, you can also use vertical hold and still get that thin edge of the brush, um, as long as you take good care of your brushes, you'll always have that nice, thin, crisp edge on the brush. So you can do thin strokes using a little, I give you tips in the demo, but you just basically use a, a vertical hold to get those thin strokes. So if round brush maybe isn't quite your thing, or you've been looking to try something new and to incorporate it with your flower paintings or with your figure studies or whatever you're painting, even fruit, um, this brush literally just makes it so easy for you. You can paint, you know, a round shape, like a ball shape or for an orange or an apple or something like that with just a little swirl. And with a round brush, you're using the tip to outline and then coloring it in with the slanted hold with the belly of the brush. So I still obviously am obsessed with my Heritage 4050 round brushes, but this one is now my go-to. I pretty much 90% of the time I'm using this brush now because it's just my favorite. I'm obsessed with it. I love the way it bounces on paper. I love how simple it is to just place it down on the paper to create petals and leaves and stems. And so this one, ooh, so good. I love it. I'm obsessed. Enough talking. Let's do the demo. So it's a size 12 filbert. And so it's got the perfect rounded corner shape for painting petals. The shape of the brush literally mirrors the shape of a petal. So all you have to do is plop it down. And I love using it both with the flat side of the brush and the angle side of the brush or the corner of the brush um, for dragging down for leaves or really thin petals on the side. So this is the only brush I'm gonna be using for the entire piece. I'm just gonna load up with some water. So this brush literally does everything from 
flowers to leaves. We can even get stems with a vertical hold. You can use the thin part of the brush, but I'm just gonna load up with some quinacridone red. This is all my Mary Blue watercolor. Um, and we'll link to all the, all the supplies in the description of the video. But I've got a really thick buttery amount of paint on my brush and a 35 degree angle. So whenever I place my first petal on my flower, that's after that point, that's when I know where the rest of the petals of the flower should go. So I'm just gonna go to the top left hand corner and with medium pressure, drag it down and then kind of twist and release to give it this little point at the end. So it's flat and then I kind of twist and release to get that really thin mark. If you can't really get that motion down, you can always just do straight down and then flat edge down here to give it this little point. And then I'm gonna release some of that pigment and have more of a transparent quinacridone red. And I'm gonna use the brush on its side now. So we had a flat petal with the flat part of the brush, and now I'm gonna use the brush on its side and basically go up a little bit higher with a little bit of a more light or transparent color and just kind of give it a C curve. So that first petal that I put down where it's pointing, that is the axis point. That's the axis point where the stem is gonna meet, where all the petals are gonna point to. So once you place your first petal on any flower, you know exactly where all of your other, other petals should go. So then it just kind of becomes filling out the rest of the flower. So I'm just going at an angle now as I get wider and wider, and you can go between flat and side with the, with the filbert brush. I kind of like to frame both sides of my main petal with two thin petals. And I really love the lighter, more transparent pinks on the sides with a more dense concentrated color in the middle. So whenever I wanna do petals pointing this way, kind of falling out, we're always using the top edge of the brush and pulling down. So if my petal is upside down from this, then I'm gonna flip my brush around. If I'm going this way, I'm gonna flip my brush around. I never flick away with the top of the petal being pushed into. You wanna pull down from the top of the petal. So I'm gonna grab just a touch of orange now to just slightly add a slight, uh, like a little bit of a different color. And we're just gonna go around and kind of frame that flower. And then I like to go with the a more of a vertical hold, so like 75 degrees away from the paper and just kind of do little ends of petals and then we might kind of carve out some contrast. So as you can see, we've got a little rose or peony, whatever you wanna call this flower. And same thing, I'm gonna have a flower pointing straight up or a little bit to the right. So I'm just gonna do my first petal and kind of cruise from there. Maybe this one is a little bit smaller. I've got some white gouache mixed with quinacridone red on this one, just a little bit of white gouache. So I'm gonna have this be my highest point. So my lowest point will be down here in opposing corners. So I'm gonna do one a little bit higher than this over here to create a little zigzag. You wanna make sure they're not all the same. It's a very similar approach, just slight differences in where you're placing the thin petals and the fatter pe petals, adding in different values of colors, colors within each flower. So now I'm gonna have a flower that's pointing down. So I'm gonna start with my first petal with my brush pointing the opposite direction, pulling down, flip on its side. So then the petals that are falling away from the flower and pulling the opposite direction. So really just kind of spacing out now that I have this top section pretty full with flowers, we're gonna move down to this section and then do a little one down here. So we'll get this flower kind of pointing down to the left. So it's really just a rotation between using the flat 
belly of the brush and the edge or corner of the brush to get that petal shape. But all of your petals are going to be pointing back to that axis point on the flower. Now we'll do one more down here, maybe a little bud. Start light first, just to switch it up. my flowers are down I want to do kind of a smoky smoky blue I've got some blue gouache from my Mary I'm gonna mix it with some purple and a little brown to get a smoky eucalyptus color and for my stems I'm gonna use my brush straight up and down vertical hold here is my access point on this flower I'm just flicking my brush back and forth, barely touching the paper, kind of like you're flicking a light switch on and off motion. And that will be my stem. And I'll go back and maybe add a stem here. And for leaves, I've got a 75 degree hold and I'm just using the corner of the brush and pulling it downward. So corner of the brush, starting from the tip of the leaf and pulling down. I even similar to how we do with the flower, I like to just kind of dot my, the edge of my brush around. So we'll come over here. I'm using this blue because orange, there's a lot of orange flowers in this piece. And orange, orange is contrasting colors blue. We're not doing a bright blue, so we're letting the orange take over the brightness. But it's a nice little contrast. It's going from that axis point. And I like to just kind of squish the brush down for really fat leaves and spots. Maybe these leaves are going off the page. So just really thin and delicate with my stems and then just kind of dancing around with these sagey blue values. So I'm just kind of letting some white space in here, down in the left corner a little bit more than the top, just to let the piece breathe a little bit. And voila. There you have it. Uh, the Blooms brush is available on Amazon and Blick, linked below, the exact link to take you directly to the size 12 for Fairbert. Filbert brush, the Blooms brush is what it's, we dubbed it because when we were making this brush together, they asked me, what would you name it? What do you use it for? Blooms, it is called the Blooms brush because I use it for flowers all the time, but not just for flowers, you know, you get it. So anyway, comment below if you were able to get this brush in your hands, if you're excited to get this brush in your hands someday soon. And um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you in seeing just how wonderful this brush is and how it's elevated my watercolor skills. And I know that it will help you as well. So if you want more help with your watercolor skills, learning all the techniques, color mixing and color theory and all of that, I have a free two hour basically workshop here on my YouTube channel called The Complete Beginner's Guide to Watercolor. We'll link to it here. Make sure you check that out, especially if you're newer to watercolor. It's helpful for all stages, but especially if you're new. 
Along with that, I also do two monthly exclusive tutorials just for my patrons on my Patreon. Um, along with the two monthly exclusive tutorials, I also do two live Q and A and a live uh, art class every single month. So if you want additional help with your art skills, an art community of, of patrons and people that are trying to grow and learn from each other, then make sure you join my Patreon. It's at jennarainey.com forward slash Patreon. It's the best art community out there. And then another step further, my online class called The Art Within is basically the foundations of sketching, dimension, perspective, vantage point, all the things you need to know in order to look at something and sketch it, look at something and paint it, whether it's a real life subject or it's something in a photograph. And then on top of that, we help you drop into flow state, the neuroscience behind flow state and why it's so important to be able to tap into flow state so that you can create your best work as an artist and really drop into that place where you're able to create your best work, develop your own style. And there's so much more to the course. Make sure you check it out, jennarainey.com forward slash the dash art dash within. As always, thank you so much for watching, for liking our videos, for subscribing to this channel, and I will see you in the next video.